This is KGW News at Sunrise. You're not going to be harmed um, by getting vaccinated. So, you know, keep your job, uh, get vaccinated. It's vaccine deadline day in both Oregon and Washington. What's at stake for those who refuse to comply with the mandates, as well as those who just haven't gotten around to it yet? As the nation's ports continue to be a logistical nightmare, Portland is actually seeing a positive from it. How the city is benefiting, taking on extra work to ease the delays across the country. And then later this half hour, we're kicking off a two week competition featuring some of those popular candy to ever hit the bottom <laughs> of a Halloween trick or treat bag. <laughs> we're going to explain how you can pick the winners in our clash of the candies coming up here in about 25 minutes. Well, that's oh, huge. huge. I was already huge. dipping into the candy at our house this weekend. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. So are we drying out a little bit to yeah. start the work week? We're dry. I mean, not that the weekend was really wet, um, but we um, we have dry weather today and tomorrow. Then the rest of the week looks potentially really wet. So we'll see how that plays out. We do have a shot of what will be a full moon uh, tomorrow night into Wednesday, setting out over the Pacific Cannon Beach live. And, uh, and the moon is bright enough. You can see it's partly cloudy here in Cannon Beach. There is some clearing coming in from our northwest, 45 degrees there. For Portland right now, it's mainly cloudy, but the clouds will be breaking up in the coming hours. So by the time the sun pops up, I think a good deal of us will see some sunshine. We'll go about 46 out the door at the bus stop. It is a dry day, partly cloudy to mostly sunny at noon, 54. Then a beautiful blue sky when the kids get out of school, 61. Pretty much now normal for this time of the year. Back to you. Like the sound of it. Thank you, Rod. Well, today's an important day in both Oregon and Washington. It's the deadline for state COVID vaccine mandates. Yeah, the mandates apply to hundreds of thousands of people, from state employees to teachers to healthcare workers. Tim Gordon has more on today's deadline. The deadline is here, Monday, October 18th, when governors in Oregon and Washington require many workers to be fully vaccinated or face losing their jobs. In Oregon, state officials have not said exactly how many people are subject to the mandate, but according to the Oregonian, it appears to be at least 200,000. That includes 43,000 executive branch workers under the governor's control, but unions representing 38,000 of those workers negotiated a deal giving them until November 30th. The good news, about 90% of those workers don't need an extension because they are already fully vaccinated. Educators facing the deadline also have vaccination rates much higher than the statewide average. Some schools saying better than 90 percent of staff members are vaccinated. The same can be said for hospitals where the looming mandate spiked vaccination rates up. As an example, Portland-based Legacy Health recently said the vaccination rate of its 14,000-person workforce has increased from 85 to 95 percent. Legacy imposed its own deadline earlier this month, so 700 unvaccinated workers are already on unpaid leave. Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vine says we are still learning the effects of vaccine mandates, but she generally supports them. They are not new. Um, they have actually been a cornerstone of public health and of improving uh, the health and uh, lives of people for over 100 years since vaccines really were, uh, were invented. In Washington state, Governor Jay Inslee's deadline is the same. 60,000 state employees have until Monday the 18th to provide proof of vaccination. Last Thursday, Inslee touted a 92% vaccination rate for those state employees, writing, quote, the sky-high vaccination rates we're seeing should settle any concerns. There will be no massive disruptions in state services. But with nearly 5,000 state employees who have not provided proof of vaccination, agencies from transportation to fish and game to the Department of Corrections are planning for staffing shortages. In Washington, as in Oregon, prison workers are lagging behind other state workers with 85% vaccination rates at last check. Dr. Stephen Krager is deputy health officer for several counties in southwest Washington. He says for anyone up against a mandate deadline, the science is clear. COVID vaccines are safe and effective. We're, you're not going to be harmed um, by getting vaccinated. So, you know, keep your job. Uh, get vaccinated and and hopefully, you know, protect people along the way. Tim Gordon, KGW News. One more note to this story. The highest paid state employee in Washington could lose his job today because of this mandate. We're talking about Washington State head football coach Nick Rolovich. Rolovich did apply for a religious exemption to avoid getting vaccinated, but there's no update yet on the status of that request. 
Well, while the mandate looms, some received their first and second doses yesterday at the Regents Club in North Portland. 20 people took COVID tests at the site hosted by the Boys and Girls Club, and then 10 others got the vaccine. Last week, the White House told states to prepare for emergency approval for the Pfizer vaccine for kids 5 to 11. The Boys and Girls Club is preparing to vaccinate kids that young, and they say 40 to 50 of them could get shots at each future event. Well, Halloween now two weeks away. Yeah, but unlike last year when the holiday was basically canceled because of COVID, local doctors are saying that people should be able to have fun this week, uh, this Halloween while also staying safe. So we did talk to Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vines, and she shared some advice for families who are planning to do some trick or treating this year. To keep those activities uh, outside, it's still a good idea to have people uh, masked indoors. And then just back to basics, if people are not feeling well, they really shouldn't be participating in Halloween activities. COVID cases locally have been trending down and school and workplace vaccine mandates have helped boost vaccination rates. Well, police want to warn you about a troubling tactic that thieves are using. In the past week, there have been four incidents in southeast Portland. The victims are women driving alone. They describe two to four teenagers running up to their car, yelling, sometimes banging on the vehicle. The teens say something's wrong with the car or something's hanging out the back. When the driver gets out to check, they jump in and take off. Just get out of the area if you can. Um, we certainly recommend people don't get out of their car, uh, lock their doors, uh, and drive away to a safe location if they can. Um, if that's not possible, if they feel like they're stuck, then they can certainly call for help. If they have a cell phone, you can call 911. Uh, we'll come and give you a hand. If you know anything about these recent crimes, you're asked to contact Portland Police. Now to the economy where the Port of Portland is benefiting from those massive delays we've been seeing with container ships off the coast of California. Portland leaders say three shippers are now sending their goods to the Port of Portland on chartered ships, which will arrive every three weeks. It's a direct result of the congestion down in California. Eight additional ships will also begin using Terminal 6 at the port with larger than normal containers of goods. One West Coast shipping expert says Portland is well positioned for these containers. And I think Portland has positioned themselves well. They are, they prove they can do the container business. And I think I, I, I wouldn't see why not continues like that. In a, I see a good future. So shoppers here might likely benefit because products will get to stores faster. There's a global supply chain backup because of several factors, including COVID, which shut down some factories and ports overseas, but also spurred a lot of online buying in the U.S. and a lack of truck drivers, warehouse workers and others. One more story before we get to Rod's forecast, and it's about students at Portland State University who are preparing to send off the state's first satellite. These students are part of the Portland State Aerospace Society and their satellite named OrSat0 will hitch a ride on the SpaceX Falcon 9 when it takes off in January. The satellite won't take up much space though because it's only the size of a tissue box. <laughs> It'll orbit the Earth for about two years. The next satellite that the PSU group is working on though will be twice as big and that one will be part of a climate science mission to study cirrus clouds next year. Wow, which one of the cirrus clouds, Rod? Can you remind me which, which clouds those are, are those? Those are the high, thin, wispy ones. That, uh, you know, in second grade, in second grade, Drew, don't you remember? You no, I don't, Rob. Right? That's why that. I need your help right now. <laughs> you learn that you can call them kind of, uh, you know, horses, tails, that type of the thing. horsetail clouds. Yeah, they don't, they don't have any precipitation, but they can be sheared off the tops of storm clouds that are coming maybe in the next day. Well, thank you for that answer. Yeah, so there you go. Aerospace Society, if they have a t-shirt, I want one. That sounds super cool. All right, I um, want to talk about the back half of the week. So as forecasters, we will be watching how much rain we could be getting firing up this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, into Monday of next week. That looks to be our next real stretch of very wet weather. Right now, forecast models say a quarter to as much as a half of an inch on Friday. Not as much Saturday, but a half an inch to maybe 85 one hundredths on Sunday, and maybe that much again on Monday. So we're 
watching that. Between now and then, we have some rain coming Wednesday from this system right here that will weaken maybe just a tenth of an inch of rain. That's our next rain shot on Wednesday. For the time being, the showers that finally arrived yesterday, one of our directors, I reported he had some small hail at his place. He lives up in Clark County. I'm assuming that's where it was. Um, but right now we are quiet except for a little bit of light rain being uh, spotted on radar out across southeastern Oregon. So here are the temperatures with some cloudiness around. It's 45 in Baker City and 44 in Burns. So nobody's in the 30s right now. And we have partly cloudy skies to the coast. Newport's down to 43. Kelso reporting partly cloudy and 45. And I think if anything, we'll see the clouds start to break up before the sunrise hours in many locations. So if you have clouds right now at your place, you might be treated to some early morning sun. Salem gets up to about 60. Certainly a sunny afternoon with light winds is what we anticipate. Same thing up through southwest, uh, southwest Washington. This gives battleground a temperature of 60 degrees. Portland 61. Tomorrow could be some early fog with some of you dipping into the 30s to start, but otherwise sun in 66. We talked about Wednesday. Thursday has a shower chance, but could be a pretty dry day. And then the rain going into the weekend that we talked about. Again, if you're listening, I would like an Aerospace Society <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs> we'll get on that, see what we can do. Thank you, Rod. Coming up this morning, Portland firefighters unite to carry on a musical tradition, how they're honoring lives lost. Plus, for a lot of the pandemic, the only way to get a COVID test was at a drive through site. Now you can test at home, but can you trust the results? Our Verify team looks into it after the break.